Hello again. One of the things which I have discovered over the course of a long and exciting life is that there are certain key phrases which should always set the alarm bells ringing if you do not wish to be lied to and deceived. For instance, if a man says, trust me, then that is the very last thing you should do. In the same way, when somebody tells you it's not what it looks like, then 99 times out of 100, it is exactly what it looks like. The heart sinks too when a man announces, I can change. If he were going to change, and he would simply do so without feeling the need to tell anybody beforehand, he's up to no good. I strongly suspect that older viewers are probably laughing at this point and mentally compiling their own list of dodgy expressions which set them on their guard. Protestations of honesty, frankness and the desire to be truthful and open are of course almost invariably the prelude to lies. Growing up in East London I recall various villainous types swearing elaborate oaths on my kids' lives, for example, was always a popular line for a man about to perjure himself. Anybody who says, I'm going to be honest with you, or quite frankly, is almost without a doubt about to tell an outrageous lie. I was, for this reason, fascinated to watch our Prime Minister delivering his speech yesterday about fixing the foundations. I give a link in the description to this video to the full text of the speech and my word it really is something of a classic. I don't recall last when I was more entertained by a political speech. In the course of his oration Keir Starmer assured us no fewer than five times that he was being honest with us and he twice reminded us he was being frank. None of this boded well of course. Click on the link and read that speech so you can see what I mean. Let me read out what he said. But I have to be honest with you. To be honest with you. Being honest with people. Honest about the challenges we face. But I will be honest with you. And frankly. And then again. And frankly. These are all red flags. The kind of things one would expect to hear from a shifty and devious estate agent. What about the substance of the speech itself? Well, it was full of outright lies, of course, just as one would expect from a man who has repeatedly told us how honest and frank he is being. Let's look at one or two of those lies. We've set up great British energy to create good jobs and cut people's bills. How he can possibly say such a thing after increasing everybody's energy bills by 10%, and abolishing the winter fuel payment for 10 billion pensioners, I do not know. Here is something even more astounding. I didn't want to means test the winter fuel payment, but it was a choice we had to make, a choice to protect the most vulnerable pensioners. How depriving 10 million old people of help with their gas and electricity bills is a choice to help pensioners is not altogether clear to most of us. Here is perhaps the biggest lie of all. Starmer announced that he's going to be taking more money from us in various taxes with the uh, budget coming in October. And he frames it in this way. I'll have to turn to the country and make big asks of you as well to accept short-term pain for long-term good. A difficult trade-off for the genuine solution. And I know that after all you've been through, that it's a really big ask and really difficult to hear. Well, I pay a large amount in taxes, but the Inland Revenue do not ask me. Instead, they send me demands. The Prime Minister is not asking anything of us. He is about to demand more of our money. Asking suggests that we might refuse. But just try and refuse paying your taxes and see what happens. This speech really is something of a collector's item. Incidentally, you'll observe that in the official version from the government's own website, there are no fewer than seven reductions of political content. I've never seen this before. I'm 
this website and I'm curious to know what's going on there. I'm bound to say that I have great hopes for Keir Starmer as being the most dishonest and untruthful Prime Minister in modern times. The competition for this role is pretty stiff, but I'm sure that he's in the lead at the moment.